For Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. Oh, hi! I've been starved from Master Chef season two and I didn't see you there. Today is St. Patty's Day and I'm going to teach you how to make cold cannon. Okay, I, <laughs> that sounded a lot worse than it did in my head when I was thinking of it. I apologize, I can't do an Irish accent worth a crap. Uh, but in fact, today is St. Patrick's Day. A lot of people don't realize that St. Patrick's Day is actually an Irish-American holiday. They don't celebrate it in Ireland the way that we do here. And in fact, I'm sorry to tell you this, Boston, but Australia's St. Patrick's Day puts our St. Patrick's Day absolutely to shame. At any rate, today is the day when I try to prepare as many of my favorite authentic Irish treats as possible. And in my household, that means Colcannon. Colcannon is a traditional Irish dish that's made with kale and potatoes, and it's traditionally eaten with some type of pork. Today I'm going to teach you the way I do colcannon, which I substitute purple cabbage for kale, and I add all sorts of bacon and delicious pork fat into the mix. It's going to be absolutely delicious. Okay, let's get started. First step, I've got two and a half pounds of russet potatoes that have been sliced about that thick, maybe about an inch or so. They are unpeeled, and I like to do that because the peel adds extra flavor and texture and also increases the nutrition of the recipe. Two and a half pounds is about eight medium-sized potatoes, and I'm going to put them into my pressure cooker along with about five cloves of garlic chopped up and a cup of water. Now, if you don't have a pressure cooker, don't worry. You can cook your potatoes any way. All you're doing at this point is making garlic mashed potatoes. So you can cook them in the microwave, you can boil them, you can steam them, you can roast them, however you want to do that to make two and a half pounds of mashed potatoes. I just like to do it in my pressure cooker because it takes eight minutes, which is very fast. And it also retains a lot more of the nutrition. Next step, bacon. Now, in Ireland, this was probably made more frequently with the cheaper cuts of the pig. Basic pork belly, pork jowl, uh, hocks, smoked hocks, and things like that. Now, pork belly is probably the best meat to get for Colcannon, in my opinion. But I couldn't find any at the grocery store. They were all out. So I just grabbed some of the center cut bacon. It's got a little bit less fat in it, a little bit more lean, so it's going to be a bit meatier. And I'm going to render all of that fat out and get the bits of bacon crispy now that I've chopped it up here in my cast iron skillet. I love cooking with cast iron. If you haven't learned this from my other videos, Throw away your nonstick pans. You cannot cook good on nonstick pans. Cast iron was invented centuries ago. It is still the best form of cooking pan available known to mankind, and it always will be. It's cheap. It only requires a little bit more maintenance and care than regular nonstick pans. So go get yourself some used ones at a thrift store and start improving your cooking today. Now while that bacon is cooking, I'm going to chop up a head of red cabbage. And you don't have to wash cabbage, just remove the outer couple or three layers of leaves and discard them, and you're good to go. Now, I like to use red cabbage over the traditional kale in this recipe, first of all because of the color. I really love that beautiful red color. And uh, also because it has a little bit crunchier, meatier texture, and I really like a colcannon that's got lots of good texture running through it. Now when this bacon is nice and crispy, go ahead and pull it out with a slotted spoon. But reserve that fat. Eight minutes in the pressure cooker and my potatoes are nice and tender. That was so fast. So now I'm going to mash them with a stick of butter and oh about half a cup of heavy cream. Now a word about mashed potatoes. You'll see I'm actually using a masher. For several years, I put them into my KitchenAid and I whipped them to death until they were light and fluffy. But what I discovered after working on MasterChef is that the texture of mashed potatoes, when you whip them and overwork them, becomes kind of gluey and sticky. And I was accustomed to that being the texture I should expect, uh, but it turns out that when you just lightly mash them, you get a much fluffier, light texture to them. So use just a masher or a fork. If you've got a potato ricer, which is like a giant garlic press that presses them out, that gives you the best texture of all. But don't get in there with your immersion blender or, or, or your hand mixer or put them in your stand mixer because it is going to absolutely ruin the beautiful fluffy texture of those potatoes. 
and now I have a bowl of beautiful fluffy mashed potatoes. This is the time to season them with salt and pepper. Now I'm going to add a head of chopped red cabbage to the bacon fat. Now, cabbage takes up a lot of space, so it's going to fill your skillet. But 80% of cabbage is water and air. And all of those little air pockets inside the cabbage are going to collapse. And so this is going to reduce by half fairly quickly. Now give yourself a little bit of salt to the cabbage while it's cooking. And a splash of vinegar. I'm just going to use apple cider vinegar right now. Vinegar goes really well with cabbage. You really do not want to overcook the cabbage though. Overcooked cabbage tastes disgusting. It tastes like a dead skunk. And you really don't want to be eating dead skunk for dinner, I don't think. Uh, so you're just going to cook it until the point that it's wilted and still has some good crunch to it. And that is as far as you're going to take it. Now when your cabbage is slightly cooked but still crispy, you're going to add it to your potatoes along with a bunch of chopped scallions or green onions and all that delicious bacon you cooked earlier. Stir that together and you've got coal cannon. Now isn't that beautiful, all those wonderful colors and textures? It's like a potato salad on steroids. And that is how you make my version of the classic Irish dish. Ugh. That is a good plate of food. You can serve a big old helping of this as the main and only course. And you can serve it as a side dish to some grilled sausages or something yummy like that, a pork roast. Mmm, that's great. Crunchy bacon, crunchy cabbage, fresh bite from those green onions. That's fantastic. For the full recipe, hit my website, benstar.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great St. Patrick's Day.